Hey, it's your host, Mark Santiago. And I'm excited to introduce you to the next level of this podcast, Empowered AF 2.0. 2.0. In this next stage of Empowered AF, we're going to dive deeper into what it means to be an empowered man in his most advanced form. I'm talking healthy communication, healthy lifestyle, both physically and emotionally, and evolving into the man you've always wanted to be. So stick around and join me in this episode of Empowered AF 2.0. All right. Well, we didn't get a chance to go over anything, so we're just going to hop right into it. If you're good with that, uh, yep. I forgot to let my uh, assistant know. Don't go live yet. And uh, he was <laughs> we're, we're like a minute early, but uh, he was excited. He's like, "Let's just go right. live." And I'm like, "Well, right. fuck, let's do it." <laughs> so, but at least you had the questions ahead of time. So this is right. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. you had right. a chance to uh, to do that. Um, yep. So. Currently, if you're watching, you are not allowed in the Zoom. It's just for me and Ed- Eduardo, as he's called in Thrive. And yeah. uh, so if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can watch there. If you got questions, we might have a chance to do them. Um, I'll have my my guy uh, drop them in Slack for me if we get questions. But really, what I want to do is <clears throat> over the next like six, seven weeks, I want to be talking to some of our clients and and just let them talk about their experience, not just with Empowered Man. Um, that's important. That's cool. But really their experience and what they have experienced in life, period. Right. And so we're going to talk about, you know, stuff that was like before. Right. Because I think what you'll find is like a lot of guys come into this thinking they're the only one. Like they think like, oh, I'm the only one struggling with this or I'm the only one that has this kind of wife. Like your situation is a little unique. Right. And so we'll we'll talk about that. And um, I think it's going to be fascinating. So, um, Ed, I appreciate you being on here. Uh, wh- where did the Eduardo thing come from anyways? You know, uh, it was a, a new iteration. So we have right. tools, we have assignments that we do. And we had a, a live event in Phoenix a few months ago. And ironically, near the, at the tail end of the event, they have a, a hot tub and a, and a pool and we're, we're hanging out. And I'm talking to a couple of the coaches. And this, this is a small little hot tub. I mean, it's literally the size of my desk and, yeah. and Joey and I and, and Kay Tuck are in there and they asked me a story about myself. And I don't actually remember what the question was, but they asked me a story about myself. And when I was when I was younger and I remember giving them a story and I told them about when I was five or six, one of my earliest memories. <clears throat> and I was I was alone. I wasn't alone. I felt alone. And we lived in the ghetto. And I was trying to sleep on the couch and there were, there were roaches crawling on me. And I remember telling this story. I remember trying to find a place to hide. And I ended up, my five-year-old, six-year-old brain ended up going and sleeping in a bathtub on a, on a ironing board. And K-Tuck said, man, that sounds like your inner child. And my head just exploded. Memories had started to flood back in. Different things had come in and and they just asked me, what would you tell your inner child? And we just started talking. And then they were like, you know what? We're not going to be able to call you it anymore. We're going to have to call you something else. And it was, you know, maybe it's Eduardo. And then for the first few weeks after that, I was trying to figure out how to, how to spell it. I had a different way of spelling it each and every time. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's just, it's just stuck. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah, I was, I was, it's funny because you're telling the story like I wasn't at the event, but I wasn't in the hot tub. I was somewhere else and all that was going on. There wasn't any but, room, um, so it's all right. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It was a small hot tub. I know. I was thinking, I don't know if this one in Nashville has a hot tub. I can't remember. I know it's a little bit of a smaller, like Nashville houses, period, are like different. So it's like a two-story house, but I'm excited. Uh, yeah, for, for those of you in Thrive, we we have an event you can come to uh, quarterly. So the next one here is, is coming up in Nashville in a couple of weeks. And then after that, I think the one we're in January, we're going to do back here. And then we're looking at one for April in San Diego. So, which I know is like completely across the country from you, but it's beautiful uh, there all times of the year. So um, what I want to talk about is disempowerment in in marriage. And, you know, obviously I know some of your story. I don't know your full story. And we only have like, I, I want to keep this about 25 minutes or so. And just like, give guys an opportunity to hear someone's perspective. Who's not me. Who's not Joey. Who's not whatever. Just like, you're just a guy who's like committed himself to growth and hear from you, like what you think some of those things. So we're going to talk about disempowerment, um, you know, and, and, and why men fall into that trap, um, you know, and, and how that happens. So for you, like, what does disempowerment in a marriage feel like? I didn't feel it at the time. Hmm. 
I understand now I disempowered myself. Mm. Um, first and foremost, I put my partner on a pedestal and I was always playing catch up. When I noticed it and I started to feel disempowered, I felt manipulation and I felt bitterness. Mm. And that was because I did that. I manip- I started to, I started to not understand how to have my needs met, but I knew how to manipulate to get my needs mm. met. And when the manipulation failed, I started to get bitter and I just got completely unhappy. And, and that's, that's really the biggest thing I can say. I manipulated and I got bitter when both of those didn't work. And I just felt so weak. <clears throat> so for you, it wasn't something you noticed until you started doing the work. Is that, is that kind of what you're saying? Um, no, it wasn't until I found my confidence. I mm. have, I've always suffered with, with low self-confidence and I always figured I always put myself in the position as the caretaker. I always put myself in the position as the homemaker, as the person who would support her career, as the person who did this. I always told myself, hey, I will never be able to catch her in her career. But what I can do is I could be her Robin to her Batman. Mm -hmm. I could be her counterpart. I could be her support system. And as I grew, I, I did find some growth. I did uh, feel more power in the relationship. The difference was my, my significant other at the time didn't notice anything different. So while the relationship for her was always here, I felt here while she was here, when I started to feel here, I actually was, I thought I was here and I wanted her to come up more. I expected her to meet me at a different level, but we didn't communicate that. I never communicated my needs or my wants or any of that desire. And it, it started. So I'm like, well, I want you up here. So I'm going to start manipulating you. I want you to do this. I know how if you do this, I can get you to go here. And once that stopped working, I just got bitter. And yeah. I just became a, a, a jerk. And I just shut down. And I didn't know how to communicate my feelings. <clears throat> so when did you start to, to like see that you were manipulating her? Was that in Empowered Man or before or after? Um, it was after I learned of her affair. Okay. Uh, and, and a couple of years ago, I discovered she was having an affair and I started to look back at what was happening and what led up to the affair and what possible things. And I had realized, huh, I wanted so much more and I never communicated them. I never stressed this. So, okay, I see, I see what happened now. I could see where I could see why things turned away. <clears throat> yeah. See why I sense. anger hurt. <clears throat> yeah. So let me ask you this. Like, it sounds like you, you, you kind of fell into that classic trap that a lot of men fall into with disempowerment. Like, like, why do you think men fall into that trap? Especially the pedestal thing. Um, well, the pedestal thing is self-confidence. Uh, I, I met her when we were in college. I knew she had a good family. I didn't come from a great family and a great background. So learning now it was, oh, I could, I could get this. I can, I can get safety. I can get, I can get security. Then I got comfortable. And once you get comfortable, you get complacent. And once you get complacent, fear took hold. Fear mm. of change, fear of losing what I had, right? Fear of, yes, I want more. But if I tell her this, I might lose what I have. And I may not be able to get find something just as good. What if I can't? What if I can't? And I started with the what ifs and, oh, well, this could happen or this could. And and once I started doing that, it just goes downhill from there, in my opinion. <clears throat> yeah. So it snowballed. I mean, like, you know, you've been around our program for a while and you've seen a lot of guys come in and, 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 and have similar stuff. I mean, like. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the thing that's causing this? Is it, you know, because obviously you speak to yourself, right? Your own yep. personal confidence, but like, like, what are you seeing in the world? Like that, that is, that seems to be uh, like, it's almost like in the water, right? It's like, yeah. it's like there's this I, epidemic, if you will. I, I think there's a, I think there's a, a stereotype of guys. Guys have to be strong. Guys aren't allowed to be weak. You see on TikTok all the time about guys never ask for help. Guys aren't allowed to be this. Women have support groups. Women can go to women, but men are expected to deliver. Mm. And men are expected to bring home the bacon, 
you know, they're, they're expected to be able to provide for their kids. They're expected to be able to control their emotions. They're expected to be able to just handle the stresses of life without, without any help without, yeah. oh, it's just there. And, you know, women, women in, in some stereotypical way are, are allowed to suffer. They're allowed to woe is me. But if a guy says woe is me, oh, he's a pussy. He, he doesn't, uh, you know, he doesn't look out for himself. Oh, he's just complaining. Oh, you know, your life isn't so bad. Don't, you know, suck it up. Someone else has it worse. And, and that regard, and we see men see social media. We see these great relationships. We see how all these people are just perfectly happy out there. And it's like, oh, maybe it is. Maybe they're right. We're not, we're not, we're not supposed to reach for help. And yeah. you just get into that trap and it, it actually becomes like a sand trap. Right. You just a quicksand, so to speak. And you just deeper and deeper and deeper until the point that you can't breathe anymore. What effect do you think your own dad had on the way you viewed relationships? I, uh, I didn't know my biological father and I met my stepfather when I was nine. Mm. So I had, I had a fear of abandonment from my, my biological father. Um, I, 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 he, I feel he abandoned me to drugs. And then, you know, my mom wasn't there. My mom partied, was living her life. She was young. And yeah, I had a stepdad. It turned into a great life. And not a great life. I shouldn't say that. It turned into what I thought was a great life at the time. But that taught me to man up. And I've had three younger brothers come. And when I was 16, my younger brothers were six, five, and one. So I was spending my summer after my sophomore and junior year watching them four days a week, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And that's what I learned. It was, I went from, you know what, I got to be an adult. I have to be a, I have to be the strong one. I have to take care of everybody. And that's what I learned is, hey, I need you to take care of this. I need you to do these. I need you to do the stuff around the house. No problem, dad. That's what I'll do. Yeah. <clears throat> so it sounds like you kind of were raised in this environment that you had the 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 breakdown of father, right? Where your dad basically abandoned you. Mm-hmm. And then you had a stepdad, which is good. Um, but ultimately it led you to this point where you ended up marrying somebody who kind of you you've put on a pedestal and you learned to manipulate her and you kind of had a really just toxic relationship. And so you were just in this disempowered place. Um, what do you feel like were some of the things, and I know, I know things have changed for you recently, but what mm-hmm. were the, some of the things for you, maybe decisions you had to make that, that have you here today? Like what would be like maybe one or two or three decisions that have you where you are today in your confidence in your empowerment journey? After, after learning of the affair, um, Part of the part of the disempowerment I learned of the affair, the the month it started was also the greatest month of emotional and physical connection I had with my with my partner. She came back from a trip uh, talking about being horny, being turned on and any list, anything that you can think of sexually was was done and available to me. And then I found out about the affair. and. I just, I had nowhere to go. I had no idea what to do. It was why, 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 why me? Why does this always happen to me? Why did, why did this do? Why can't you do this? Why now? We were so close and I blamed, I blamed everybody, Mark. I mean, I blamed everybody around me and I got to a point, it was probably six months and I was sitting in my office, it was Father's Day. I got up early uh, and I just, I couldn't bear to see my family. I, I was crying regularly. I couldn't bear to look him in the eyes. Oh. And I just went in my office. I didn't have to work. I just sat there and sat under my desk and cried. And I just finally got to the point where I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Mm. It just, something said move. Something said step because I just, it hurt so much. I felt so hollow. And I just, my searches before were, okay, how do I, how do I recover from a fair? How do I do this? How do I rebuild my marriage? How do I do this? And I just started looking for, I don't remember what I looked for. Um, I think I was looking for power. I think I was looking for taking my life back. And I found your YouTube video. 
I found a couple of your YouTube videos and one of them just said, stop sitting in your own shit and take back your life. And I was like, huh, I wonder how legit this is. And I initially signed up for the five day course. And I yeah. think the first couple of classes were like, I mean, if, if I like to describe it, it's like the cartoon. If my head could explode, I'd peak smoke coming out. It was, that was one of my first moments where I'm like, okay, I, I, there's maybe someone here. Let me see what this is. And that's, that's when I started, started to reach out. <clears throat> what do you think ultimately, you know, the five day, the, it sounds like, you know, it's kind of a typical client journey for us, which is mm-hmm. guy doesn't even know we exist. Like most guys have no idea there's something out there that does what we do. And usually, cause the easy thing is turn to marriage counseling, turn to therapy, uh, t- or turn to one of those coaching programs that promises to save your marriage. And they try all that shit. And then at the end of the day, they still feel empty. They still feel purposeless. They still don't know who they are. They have no passion and they're just depressed. Yep. Like you basically saw, you know, found the video, you did the five day challenge, and then you ultimately jumped into the, the thrive program. I mean, like what, was there a catalyst for you where you were like, here's why I've got to do this. Like, like, cause obviously you've committed and you've been with us now for a while. So I mean, like there's a commitment of a journey for you, but what, yeah. what do you think if you can remember, like in your mind, what shifted to your ego, you know what, I'm going to fucking take the leap. Cause you know, five day challenge is a small investment. And you know, if you're, you're probably like, if I lose 27 bucks, whatever, right. If it sucks, it sucks. Yep. I'll get a refund. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but taking this leap was a bigger leap. Right. Um, and, and so like, if anything, if you can remember, like, was there something that you said, you know what? I just got to fucking do this. Like, like, what was that? If you can think there was, I was sitting in the office and the first thing was Mark, your videos you described and it spoke to me was you're not here to save marriages. You're here to save men. And at my core, that was a message that just said, yeah, I need saving. And I've lost myself. Uh, uh, I grew up just to back up a little bit where you were. Yeah. My stepdad, my 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 stepdad told me what to do, where to go. I joined the Navy. It told me where to go, what to do. So I mm. always had, I always had something to catch me if I fell. I met mm. my partner and knew there would be a good life. I always had that. Now I had nothing. I mm. knew I had nothing. I had no idea where to go. And some of the videos said. I'm not here to save your marriage. I'm here to save you. I want to save men. And the five day challenge seemed real. And a lot of the stuff that you'd said in there spoke to me and it was like, okay, I want to know more. And then when I talked to, when I talked to the the entry and I intro the, the, the thrive program, I was caught off guard because it was like, I had to apply. It was like, I, I wasn't just coming in here and going, Hey, I'm going to sign up. Here it was. It was, are you ready? And yeah. in the intro calls, they were, I was, they were asking deeply personal questions. And I'm, I was like, I don't, I don't know you. I don't know if I want to <laughs> share this. Why do I have to share this? Yeah. And the frank, the frank of the answer was, we don't want you in your program unless you want to take a step and you want to take ownership. And yeah. it was like, there it is. Yes. I want to take ownership. And no matter what I'm doing here, I've got to do something. I have to do something different because what I have been doing isn't working. And yeah. if this is an invest, it's an investment in me. If yeah. it's this is what I'm going to do, you know what? I'm investing in me. And just as if you're going to invest in whatever else it is, you know, your house, your life. I, I'm investing in myself. I'm not yep. buying a program. I'm not committing to this. I'm investing in myself. And that's how I decided to look at it. And that's what I. That's that was my mindset change. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's like, I feel like I hear that every time I asked. I got to hang out with Tyler um, in in uh, Phoenix, and we were talking through his conversation and he was saying the same thing he was like he's like i was just so done trying to save something that i knew was potentially just broken and i needed to look at myself and save myself and you know it just resonated so i, I appreciate you sharing that um I love tyler tyler yeah. i love tyler that's my brother i love him he and i text regularly every day checking in on each other <laughs> so that that's like that's my next question right is like so like you were you were this guy who was like outside of community like you probably had friends and you, you know, you, you probably had a social circle of some sort, you have a job, like right? all those things, but like, you didn't have this community. So right. what's, what's it been like for you to be around this, to have like this kind of brotherhood? It is, you know, brotherhood is putting it lightly. Yeah. It is, it's a safe space. Hmm. 
it's a safe space for men who are are dealing with very similar situations. And every guy is different. Every yeah. story is different. Every if every marriage is different. But there are times on calls. Oh yeah, I resonate with that. Oh, I yep, yeah, that's me. And the next thing you know, there's a chat going off in the groups or, or instant chats going in there on, on, on the Thrive program, on the boards and, yeah. and, and the assignments. When you're having trouble with an assignment, oh, they're here. There's just this, this safe space that it's not going anywhere. You know, you bring in, yeah. you bring in therapists when Misty comes in and Misty just Misty just, just comes in and just breaks it down in ways like here. And, but then at the same time, you'll have someone like Joey. Joey doesn't take anybody's shit. Yeah. You know, you want to come in with a woe is me attitude. He'll give you a little bit of time for woe is me attitude. But hey, okay, enough of this. Get off the pity party. What's another way we can reframe it? This yeah. is another way. Yes. Oh, why is it happening to me? No, change that. What do I have to learn from this? You know, and and, and, and it's a, a helping you change your change your mind and yeah. you never miss. It never yeah. misses. He doesn't let you slide on it. And it's, it's I'm going to call you out. Hey, I hear a lot of she button. I hear a lot of you talking about her. I hear about this. What are you doing about it? What are you doing for yourself? The yeah. community has nothing to do with our marriage. We talk yeah. about our marriage. The community has to do with the individual, the person sitting in front of you, the person that needs help, the man in front of you. It just so happens your marriage might get fixed. It might get not. I, you don't care. Joey doesn't care. You care about me. Yeah. You care that I show up regularly and then I show up for my kids and I show up as an empowered man and I set the life that I need to go. And everyone in the community speaks that way and, yeah. and it's understood that way. And then we all start lifting each other up in that same boat. And we've all just started to take it from there. And, and now I'm branching out and talking to people and Larry's talking to people and K Tuck and, and Devin, and they all do their own thing. And it's every, not their own thing, excuse me, because it's all under the EM umbrella. Yeah. But they're taking those EM tools and helping because, you know, Joey couldn't be there at first for everybody. So yeah. it's been it's 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 empowering is really what yeah. it is, Mark, to get back to it. <laughs> and, and that's really what we were trying to build, uh, you know, because when I first started this program, it was actually one on one. And I knew I wanted to shift to a group model, but also knew it was going to take some time to, to get there. And when we did, it was like, it was so cool to watch guys just embrace each other who were going through it. You know, it's like, as the leader, you kind of become a little removed, especially because like, I'm not in that situation, season of life. I'm fully okay. beyond, I'm married to another person, but it's cool to watch you guys do that. And like, what was so unique to me is like, you guys all got to see each other for the first time in Phoenix. And it was like, it was almost like you guys had known each other for years. Like, what was that like when you met up in person? It was special. Uh, there were, there were hugs. There were tears. Yeah. There were small groups, but there was no discomfort. There was every, every personality is going to be different. Every guy is going to be different. Everyone's going to have things that annoy someone about it, but you were there for a collective reason. You yeah. were there to make each other better. Yeah. And it didn't matter who you talked to. It was, oh, okay, this is what's going on. Oh, yeah, there you go. How's your, how's your, how's your journey going? Oh, we're doing this, we're doing that. And this is what you look like. You know, for me, the biggest thing was, oh wow, that person's tall. Okay. Cause everyone's usually sitting in a certain <laughs> thing. And it's like, whoa, that person's tall. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. K-Tech looks big. K Tech like the thing. Yeah. Man, he's definitely a, 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 a thing. And then you see someone like Sam and you're like, yeah, I don't, I'm not benching what Sam benches, right? You know, and 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 in that regard, and it's just the 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 you hear like different voices. Sam, for instance, has that. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk yeah. like this, and but then you meet him, and he's a big soft teddy bear. Yep, just a big soft teddy bear, and just wants to. He just wants that community and, and joining in with us, and it's just a cool yeah. guy. And it's all of the any kind of pre preconceived notion that you would have. There was just no discomfort. Everybody was like, what's next? How can we help each other? How can we help this brother next to us? <clears throat> yeah. I, I, one last thing about the event. Like, so, so it sounds like for you, it was a couple of things that happened. One, you got to finally meet some people and, and, and now we're going to do it again and we'll keep doing it. And like, that's cool. So you have that. And then you had the name change, if you will. Mm -hmm. So that was like another cool thing. Um, was there any other like 
parts of the event that like stuck out to you that just was like mind blowing for you? So uh, I will, I will be fully honest with you, Mark, and you'll remember this. I, uh, I, I, I ended up getting a dinner with you yep. um, because there's a point where I go, is this guy full of shit? And I remember <laughs> asking, I remember going, I wanted to know if you were full of shit. And you looked me dead in the face and said, what do you think? I said, no, you're the real deal. And he's like, that's it. No, yeah. go do the work. And it was, you know, that, that was nice in, in uh, there. And, uh, but after the dinner, I met up with the rest of the guys and there were people like Mondo, you know, Norman Mondo, I didn't know. And, and Henry didn't know, but we just kind of ended up hanging out. And then yeah. we ended up going to another place to drink. And we ended up just, and we didn't get in trouble or anything like that, but we came into the first day of lessons a little hungover. And then we all went out the next night and there were still different groups and different people. Yeah. And you just, who you think you're going to hang out with, you're like, oh, maybe this person looks like someone I would hang out with. You may end up hanging out with someone completely different because yeah. you just click with certain people and, and any kind of preconceived notion that you had with, oh, this person might be who I would hang out with, or this might be the yeah. type of person I would go with. No, everyone's in the same boat and you just end up clicking with people that you wouldn't, you walk by the street, you would never know. You would never stop and talk to them. And then next thing you know, hey, let's hang out. Let's do this. Let's go. And yeah. what do you do? And you change the numbers and then you're texting and, and working through it. And so it was just throwing everything that you could possibly know about growing out the window yeah. because it, it, it just, it, it blew my mind is what it did. And, and isn't that really the, the true power of the connection around the the sort of foxhole mentality right which is is like you guys specifically are in the battle or you've been in the battle and you're in those trenches together it don't matter what the guy on you left or right looks like talks like you're like i don't give a fuck can you shoot that gun can you yep. can you take out the enemy for me on this side and i'm going to take out the enemy for you on this side that's yep. the power of the connection are you are you a good old boy from the south are you a, a, a Northeast rich stuck up this? Are you, you know, whatever it is, you're possibly opposites. There yeah. wasn't, there were, there were, it was almost like it, you just, you know what, we, we, we were here for a common goal and yeah. we're reaching that common goal together. <clears throat> yeah. So if you could go back a year or two years, um, what would you tell yourself? A year, I need help sooner. Hmm. You can't do this by your own. Um, two years, and I'm a completely different person than I was two years ago. If I know what I know now, it's okay. I need work on my communication. I need this, uh, wake up. I mean, that's really the biggest thing is, is wake up and put yourself first. Mm. Uh, that's, that, that would be what I would say is yeah. you can't fill, you can't pour from your cup if your cup is empty. And it's that, that airplane you know, when you're on there and they talk about it on the airplane and, and the mask drops down and, and you've got your kid next to you, you've got to put that mask on yourself because if you don't put that mask on yourself to protect yourself, you won't be able to protect your kids. You'll want yeah. to. You'll want to sacrifice everything and your, your being will be to, I need to kill myself for this child. But you can't. You, you've yeah. got to be able to take yourself and support yourself and love yourself and put yourself first so that way you can give to others. <clears throat> That's what right. I would say is put yourself first. <clears throat> um, final question. Um, so with where you're at now, you know, obviously you've been with us for gosh, 10 months, I think it is. Um, what are you working on right now? Like anything in, anything in particular that you'd mind sharing? My spiritual journey, my spiritual okay. journey. Um, I, I am, we have finalized that we are going to divorce. Okay. And we have actually, we are a healthy, we're doing it in a healthy manner. We have 99% of agree. We are cohabitating, co-parenting, and we get along great. We can sit down and have dinners as families. We know what's going on, but I am still in that. I need to put myself first and I've, I break down. I let myself feel. That's one thing that I've personally let myself do is let myself feel and yeah. And I've had a few moments where it's like, okay, God, are, are we there? I've been trying. I've been listening. What, what do you want from me? 
and I, I'm turning and I'm trying to work on my spirituality, sp excuse me, spirituality and see what I can find, see what I can work on. And, and I've had a few calls with, with other brothers who, who have a, a deeper relationship with God than I ever have. And, and they're sharing some tips on how, it, how they started their journey. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just en entering the journey. I'm asking for, for help. Um, and I'm going from there. <clears throat> Love it. Well, man, I appreciate you showing up and um, and sharing your journey. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to uh, to hear it. Um, and uh, it's always great to hear from, you know, what I'm not really connected to you. I don't, I, we've, you know, we've had those conversations in person, yeah. but like, I haven't been a part of your journey. And so it's, it's really cool to hear how far you've come and I'm excited about what is next for you. Uh, so. I, I appreciate it. And if I, if anyone can, you know, if it works for anybody else, by all means, if you're lost, there's, there's help. There's, yeah. there's help. Just take it on yourself and ask. We, there are, there are brothers out there. You're not alone. That's what I would say. Yeah. <clears throat> well, thank you for being on Thanks, and uh, we'll uh, cut the live here and we'll see you guys next week, Tuesday and Thursday. We'll be doing this again, Tuesday with uh, Joey. And then Thursday, I can't remember who our guest is, but we have another guest coming on. So We'll see you guys then. Hey, thanks again for joining us on this episode of Empowered AF 2.0. If you're new here, thanks for checking out this episode. And I encourage you to take a visit back to the first episodes in this podcast. Look, we have over 50 episodes on the foundations of how to be an empowered man. I'm talking about in your relationship with your wife, your kids, your work, your boss, whoever and whomever. And I highly suggest you take some time to listen and gain some insight and knowledge from those episodes. And hey, if you want to connect with me deeper, be sure to check out the Empowered Man group. That's empoweredman.co slash group empoweredman.co slash group for latest information and to join our group of other men who are wanting to be empowered just like you. Until then, this is Mark signing off, Empowered AF 2.0.